somebody's life and what eliminates those causes are blessings when God finished creating man he blessed the man so that he will be able to fulfill his destiny it's and God blessed them and said to them be fruitful now fruitfulness is not talking only about physical reproduction is talking about all round fruitfulness the fruitful in your thinking the fruitful in the work of your hands the fruitful in the physical reproduction of having children the fruitful mentally relationally all round that is be able to create the productive just like I, your creator, is a productive God. And he created us in his image so that we can be productive. That is why he put certain capacities inside us. Gifts, talents. Those gifts and talents are our equipment. To fulfilling destiny but those gifts and talents will not be able to produce to their maximum without the blessing there is nothing that limits a destiny like a cause somebody can know so much be so much talented be so much hard working Plan so excellently, they try to execute it perfectly, and yet not succeed because there is a cause. I have seen people who are very intelligent, a woman had master's degree for 11 years, she couldn't get a job. Jobless until we minister deliverance to her. That within one month, job came. 11 years with master's degree. That was many years ago. Not now that master's is everywhere. You are talking about more than 10 years ago. No job. Why? Because there was a cause. Just like light is the only cure for darkness the blessing is the only cure for the cause if there is darkness and you throw atomic bomb it will not take away the darkness if you bring nuclear missile it will not take away the darkness the only cure for darkness is light and the only cure for the cause is the blessing Therefore, today, by the blessing of God, every cause that ever limited your life, they are destroyed. This is a blessing service. Praise the name of the Lord. What are the physical effects of the blessing? When the blessing comes upon a person, what are the tangible things you see? And you'll be able to say, this person is blessed. Number one, the blessing promotes you far above others. If somebody is blessed or claims to be blessed and is at the bottom, something is wrong. It's either he's not blessed as he claims or there is something is not doing properly praise god either is not blessed as he claims either is not blessed as he claims 
or there is something is not doing well. Any time the blessing is upon a person, that person will always be on top. God's word cannot fail. The scriptures cannot be broken. In the book of Deuteronomy, where we read, verse 1, 28 verse 1, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which are commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. On high above all nations of the earth. God has not started lying yet. And he will never start. The same blessing resting upon the nation of Israel is the same blessing resting upon you. And every Nobel Prize award, Israel will take one third. Go and, go and investigate. History of Nobel Prizes. People who distinguish themselves in various areas of life all over the world. When you share the wealth of the world into three, one, one part belongs to Israel, to the Jews alone. Jews, I don't just mean the nation of Israel, the Jews. Whether they are Jews living in Nigeria, whether they are Jews living in America, you know these whites, they have been able to, um, all these Forbes Foundation that make, collect data on rich people. They have been able to put together the data concerning the Israelis that are scattered all over the world and put total their assets and their wealth. And what they found out was shocking to the whole world. Go and browse it on the internet. Just put Jewish wealth on Google. What you will see is that when you share the wealth in the entire world into three, one is in the hands of Jews. America, Russia, China, Australia, Asia, Africa, Germany, Spain, all the nations of the world share two. Israel take one, takes one all alone. Why? The blessing. May that blessing rest on you now. God has not started lying. He said all these blessings shall come upon you. And one of the effects of that blessing is that it will always put you above others. In the same Deuteronomy 28 verse 13, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which are commanded this day to observe and to do them. He said, You will be above only. You will not be beneath. I can't understand students that are coming average in the class and you are born again and you are filled with the Holy Ghost every cause limiting your destiny that cause is destroyed on this mountain in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14 Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14 Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14 shall be blessed above all people. Thou shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Thou shall be blessed above all people. Above all people. Is that not a living testimony in our generation? All the superpowers they will gather together with the rest of the world to share two over three. Two parts. 
Israel will take one. Thou shall be blessed above all people. God has not started telling lies. May that blessing take you far above all those around you in the same career, in the same profession, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Genesis chapter 27, 28 and 29. Genesis 27, 28 and 29. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and let nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cause be everyone that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee. One day I was in Uyo. I don't know how God led the servant of the Lord. And he began to quote some scriptures and asked me to read. I will read and he will use it to pray and pronounce blessings. And this was one of the scriptures he read. I read and he used it to pray. Confirming what God already, already told me. That's why I don't bother about anybody cursing me. Praise God. He said, he that cursed you is cursed. So, it's just like somebody tying a rope on his neck and hanging himself. Why do you bother about such a person? God has said it to me and my prophet confirmed it. Praise God. From today, Every cause, witchcraft cause, enchantment of any description working against you by the blood of Jesus, they are destroyed. I said they are destroyed. What are the physical effects of the blessing? Number two, the blessing immunizes you against causes. The blessing is an immunity against causes. The blessing immunizes you. Praise God. Whether the light was there before darkness came or darkness was there before light came, the presence of light equals the absence of darkness. Praise God. Open at one o'clock I could go in the night and you switch on all these lights, including the floodlights outside. What will happen? The darkness will clear. Praise God. Now, if these lights are on now and continues till daybreak tomorrow, what will happen by 1 a.m. in the night? Hmm? The darkness may be somewhere else, but it will enter. Because the light is there. So, the blessing immunizes you against the entrance of causes. The blessing is an immunity that forbids the jam of causes from entering your life. You are blessed. In the book of Numbers chapter 22, verse 12. Numbers 22, verse 12. Numbers 22, verse 12. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, Thou shalt not cause the people for they are blessed. Don't bother. You'll be wasting your time. 
Don't go with them. Not just for integrity's sake. Because I know that you are a corrupt person. You are a false prophet. You are a genuine prophet, but now you have begun to... So, don't even bother to go to them. Don't bother to cause them, because it will not work. They are blessed. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people. For they are blessed. So the blessing forbids curses from working. The blessing is an immunity against curses. The blessing is an immunity against curses. The blessing is an immunity against curses. When somebody prepares a charm to run down a business, it's a curse. They, 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 they set causes in motion. Because causes are evil utterances backed up by demonic powers. Causes are not just wishes. Causes are evil utterances backed up with demonic powers in this context. I don't want to talk about the cause of the Lord. Or maybe self-inflicted causes. But in the context in which we are discussing it, when somebody goes to the shrine and invokes the shrine against the person, is releasing causes. That's why there's no native doctor that can prepare a charm without speaking. Instead, they'll be muttering something. They'll be murmuring. But the mouth has to be releasing some utterances. It is those utterances that the demons go out to enforce. They say, no business, business again. Those are utterances. Like those chants we burnt there. There were utterances that we are made while those things were being prepared. Every chant, every evil utterance made anywhere against you. By the blood of Jesus, they are destroyed. They are destroyed. Numbers chapter 23 verse 20. Numbers 23 verse 20. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he had blessed. And I cannot reverse it. He didn't say I will not reverse it. He didn't say I don't wish to reverse it. He didn't say I shall not reverse it. He said I cannot. I have tried. You know that presidents of nations come and hire me. And any nation I put a curse on, they become confused. They begin to fight each other. Everything goes apart. But I have tried this one and it didn't work. Why? Because they are blessed. You are blessed. The God of blessing is stronger than the demons behind the curses. The God who blesses. Anytime they invoke curses, they assign demons to enforce those curses. Number three, the blessing enforces God's promises. The blessing enforces God's promises. Opportune to be in a, a service where God opens the eyes of the man of God and is telling you, or maybe through a personal encounter, some of those things that God has planned for you. But I'm telling you that one of the ways to ensure that those blessings come to pass is that the blessing of God comes upon you. When God created man, he had a mind that they will multiply they will be fruitful, they will replenish the earth, they will subdue it and have dominion. But he knows that those plans will not be achieved until he has put a blessing on man. 
and when he finished creating them, creating them he put a blessing God blessed them and God said unto them to tell you that it was not a coincidence when the world was destroyed all the human beings died and God started another generation using Noah and his children he declared the same blessing again and God blessed Noah and his sons because he knows without the blessing the plans cannot be achieved without the blessing destinies will be aborted destinies will be unfulfilled in the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 6 and 7 Hebrews chapter 7 verse 6 and verse 7 but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises and blessed him that had the promises and blessed him that had the promises here was a man verse 7 and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better here was a man who was carrying promises that his children will be the channel of blessing for the whole world he was carrying great blessings i'll give you the whole land of kenna but those blessings could not take effect until those promises could not manifest until somebody pronounced a blessing on him to enforce them because for every plan of god there's resistance praise god satan was already in the world before adam and eve were created that was why God was speaking in military terms. Subdue the earth, have dominion. What are you going to have dominion over? Is it the animals that you named that is not opposing you? He's talking about demonic forces there. He put him in charge to rule over everything. And God knew there would be oppositions. So every plan of God has opposition. The matter is so serious. God said, believe the Lord your God, so you shall be established. I think God is so big that he can do without anybody. God is so powerful that what he decides to do, he can do. But God has clearly stated that for you to maximize your destiny, you believe him, you shall be established. You believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. It was not by mistake. If he lacked, he had the power to do without prophets. And Abraham was a prophet. God himself called him a prophet. But because there was no other prophet around to bless him, he had to send Jesus to the earth to bless him. Melchizedek was one of the manifestations of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament before he was physically born. The Bible said he had no father, he has no mother. Is that a human being? Without beginning or end of days, angels have beginning because they are created. Praise God. So God, the matter was so serious that God had to send our Lord Jesus to come and enforce the blessings on the life of Abraham. Jacob was carrying blessings. But he knew something was still missing in his life. Until the day God sent an angel in response to his prayers. And he held that angel and said, I will not let you go except you bless me. His name changed from Jacob to Israel. And that is the nation, that is the name the nation of Israel is bearing today. His destiny opened up. You are blessed! You need the destiny. 
the blessing to open your destiny. Many people are carrying great potentials and they are struggling. Not as if you don't know what to do. No. Not as if you are foolish. No. Not as if you are lazy. No. What you need is that someone placed in authority by God should enforce the promises by pronouncing blessings on you. What to know about the blessings? Number one, what to know about the blessings? The physical effects of the blessings? The blessing promotes you far above others? The blessing immunizes you against causes? The blessing enforces God's promises? What to know about the blessing? Number one, the blessing is provoked by holiness. The blessing is provoked by holiness. It is not possible to continually walk in sin and remain blessed. It is not possible to be a continual breaker of God's commandments and remain blessed. In the book of Numbers chapter 23 verse 20. Numbers 23 verse 20 and 21. Behold, I have received the commandment to bless and he had blessed and I cannot reverse it. Can we read 21 together? One to go. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Verse 21 says, the reason he is blessed the reason that blessing cannot be reversed because the opposite of blessing is cause. To put a cause means that the blessing has been reversed. Just like a car is moving in this direction. Praise God. You can't get the force, the front of that car to face this way except you reverse the car. If the front is facing this way and it's moving, you have to reverse it for it. So what God spoke over your life is the blessing. And any cause means that that blessing has been reversed. That what God said has been turned upside down. And no power has the right. There's no personality. There's no force that has the ability to do it. He said he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. And the reason he blessed, the reason I cannot reverse it is because he has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Verse 21. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. Every time God sees iniquity, he brings messages of hope, messages of rebuke messages that will bring repentance but if the individual or the family or the nation concerns do not change God withdraws his blessing he withdraws it in the book of Malachi he said to them I will curse your blessing may God never curse your blessing and it is turning away from sin that will bring the blessing that will bring the that, that is the foundation. The foundation of every cause started with sin. The foundation of every, every blessing will start with holiness, with righteousness. So it's not possible to continue in sin and remain blessed. In the book of Psalm chapter 1 verse 3. Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, nor standard in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. He said he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. Also his leaf shall not wither, and whatever he doeth shall prosper. That is the blessing. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Which man? The man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. 
nor seated in the seat of the scoffer, nor standard in the way of sinners, but his delight is in, his, in the Lord, and upon his Lord that he may sit day and night. Praise God. It shall now be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. Say, I'm the man. Praise God. How many hands do you have? Eh? Okay, not one. May you never have one hand. How many legs do you have? May you never have one leg. Anybody who is standing on one leg is not standing well. And there is nobody that has only one hand that can win Olympic race if he's running with people who have two hands. Please, let nobody bamboozle you with all those things. There are two types of righteousness in the Bible. The one is imputed righteousness. Are you hearing me? Can we say it together? Imputed righteousness. That is not because of what you have done. Whether you have done good or bad before. But by receiving Jesus Christ. The Bible says God makes you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? The same way he sees Jesus as holy. That is the same way he now begins to see you and accept you as a child. As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. He who knew no sin was made sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Praise God. So God now begins to treat you the way he will treat Jesus. Praise God. He begins to see you the way he will see Jesus when he was on earth. In Psalm 32, verse 1, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord does not input iniquity. How did he? Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sins are covered. Continue. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity. So iniquity can be imputed. What does input, imputing iniquity mean? You did not commit the iniquity. But because your great great grandfather Adam committed sin, you were born a sinner. You and I we were born sinners. Not because you lied once. That one is another chapter. But because we inherited the nature of sin. You are a black man. Not because you chose to be black. But because your parents are black. Praise God. So that was imputed sin. And what takes care of imputed sin is imputed righteousness. By one man, sin came into the world. By another man, righteousness came. That is uh, uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 5 is talking about forgiveness of sin. Romans chapter 6 is talking about the new nature and the imputation of the, uh, uh, killing the old nature and imputing the new nature and its righteousness. Chapter 7 is talking about being dead to the law. And chapter 8 is talking about the new nature and the life in the spirit. Chapter 9 is talking about divine of, I mean, doctrine of election. So we have dealt with imputed sin. What is the cure for imputed sin? Imputed righteousness. Jesus died. Just by receiving him, you became righteous. But also, before you gave your life to Christ, you were committing sins. You and I, praise God. And God gives you the ability to stop committing those sins. As salvation, you receive the ability to stop committing those sins. He that is born of God sinneth not, for his seed remaineth in him. If you are still continuing those sins, it's because you have not maximized that ability. You have not asked 
the Holy Spirit to help you to kill the power of sin that is overpowering you. The ability to live righteous is inside everyone to overcome homosexual activity, to overcome uh, lesbianism, to overcome uh, masturbation, to overcome lying and cheating. The second leg of righteousness is called practical righteousness. Praise God. What did I call it? The righteousness that you practice. The other one was received, imputed. That, what is the difference? If somebody sat in a car and the car was traveling, and he gave his life to Christ. He has not done anything again. And God forbid there was accident inside that car. He will die and go to heaven. He has received imputed righteousness. Praise God. But from the moment he steps down from that car, he is expected, in addition to imputed righteousness, he is expected to practice righteousness, practical righteousness. First John 3. Verse 7 to 10. 1 John 3. Little children, let no man deceive you. Okay, if somebody is writing like this, what do you think? If somebody started a statement by saying, Little children, let no man deceive you, what do you think? He knows that people are being deceived. He knows. That concerning what he wants to write, people are already deceived. And there are deceivers that will still deceive more. So he's warning them against that deception. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous. The righteousness that you do. There is the one that you were imputed with, that you received. This is the one you do, the one you practice. You stop telling lies. You stop cheating. You stop fornicating. You stop doing those bad things you used to do. That is practical righteousness. You start telling the truth. He that committed sin is of the devil. And it's not important how many bishops cap you have on your head. He that committed sin is of the devil. You can be the Pope of the whole world. It's not important. He, you can be a Sunday school teacher. You can be a past, um, a, a choir uh, sing, member. You can be evangelist. You can be head of any department. He that committed sin is of the devil. It's a very terrible thing. For somebody to be lifting up his hands to worship God in the church. And the devil will be laying claim over you. He said, when you finish, you come. You are my property. It will never be your portion. He that committed sin is of the devil. Let nobody deceive you. People can turn, speak long grammar to cover the issue of sin. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The work of the devil is sin. He started it from the beginning. And the reason Jesus came is to destroy sin. I don't care how long you have been born again. Any salvation that did not make you to stop sinning is a fake one. Go to churches and people feel everywhere. Boyfriend and girlfriend in the same church. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains to him. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. He cannot continue. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. He said, this is the dividing line. People can blow grammar. A pastor may tell us how he went to Germany, how he went to London, and they will turn Bible this way, turn Bible this way. The Bible said, this is the final verdict. Whosoever do it, do it, do it, do it, not righteousness is not of God. Neither anyone that loveth not his brother. Anybody who is lying, anybody who is cheating, anybody who is stealing. When they, they see people's, when you see somebody else's uh, money, your body is vibrating until you are taking something from it. 
it means you need to go back to the cross you need to go back and have your nature renewed and have the old nature crucified praise god don't let anybody deceive you grace 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 is not a license to sin royal priesthood are you hearing me give me titus titus 2 11 for the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men grace this grace i mean amala 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 have you ever found out that many preachers you know can start a message and finish and they 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 preach three days and they have not told anybody to turn away from sin how many know what i'm talking about they have not told anybody to repent to stop fornication to stop lying to stop cheating you listen to messages on internet there's no preacher that will come and tell you to start stealing there's no preacher that will come and tell you to go and start fornicating but not saying it over a long period means approval tacit silent approval for the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men yes grace came with a message grace came with a message what is the message of grace can we read together one to go anytime somebody tries to use message of grace to cover up iniquity quote this verse ask them to read it that grace they are talking about came to achieve something grace came with a message let us hear the message that grace came to preach to us teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss we should live low, so badly righteously and godly not when we get to heaven in this present world praise the name of the lord all the bad things i used to do i do them no more all the lies i used to tell i tell them no more all the stealing i used to do i steal them no more there is a great change since i met what is confusing unbelievers today is that somebody said he's born again told them that he's born again 10 years ago and he's still practicing all the sins he used to practice in fact what we see today is that people from catholic church from orthodox churches they so-called repent and join some of these pentecostal churches and their character becomes worse when they were in those churches there were things they dared not wear to church even looking at themselves in the mirror they know that this one is dressed to kill they won't wear it to office praise god i've been a student so many times i've seen lecturers turn turn students away from the class so with this thing you are wearing one one doctor is it doesn't he's not born again he's not born again i know him very very well doctor is not born again i don't want to talk more about him praise god but he hates indecent dressing he used to send them out of the class like no man's business so those people that came from those orthodox churches when they went to go to church they see a big signboard in front of their church describing the kind of things you will not wear even they themselves know it's not right the so-called pentecostal they join they tell them everything is right even if you wear pants there's no problem god sees only your heart he doesn't see your body praise god these things i i i don't enjoy talking about these things because sometimes they are a distraction but why i talk about those things sometimes is so that we can address the basic thing abu namadi healing in the sense cloth 
all man have to have the Holy Spirit. Or just need to give an honor. Now, the problem is not the indecent plot. Praise God. The problem I brought the indecent plot. The problem brought the indecent heart from where the indecent cloth came out. Before the person began to wear the kind of cloth that will make everybody ogre in a hey, no one calls this no, no. The inside are rotten. Go inside the lane. Go. This year, baby, now no ziva. That dress, we just you are seeing the smell of the rottenness inside. Give me Proverbs seven verse ten. Proverbs seven verse ten. And behold, they are met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. That is what most people see. That is what most people talk about. The attire of a harlot. But there was something that produced the attire of a harlot. A harlot. Can you complete it? A deceitful, a, a, a bad, a dirty heart. An immoral heart. That was what produced the attire of a harlot. A heart that cannot contain the immorality inside. is always striving to advertise it. Praise God. So you talk about the clothes going down. You say, okay, but it will go down. Okay, okay. Obada, obada. Obada, obada. Odokanya from here to here. Because there's something inside that is trying to manifest itself. As you came back, you got to watch it. Watch it, okay. I got to watch it, watch it. Okay. There is something inside. You, unless you cure that one, you will be wasting time. If you carry coats, suit and tie, and give a chimpanzee, it doesn't change his nature. That is a problem that many churches who teach decent dressing have. They concentrate on the outward. If you put chimpanzee in suit and tie he doesn't change his nature so we are that's why we we, we play down on some things because we are interested in that nature changing because if the person is here he can wear blankets when he leaves this place you, if you see him again you say, ah, is this brother praise God they will, they will wear their trousers and God have mercy. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. New nature must produce new character. Number two, what to know about the blessing? The blessing is provoked by consistent tithing and giving. The blessing is provoked by continuous consistent tithing and giving. Malachi 3 verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes. All the tithes. All the tithes. You see, my prayer is that God will open our eyes. Some people use number 6 to follow God. When they bring the salary, they remove this allowance. Remove the other allowance. Remove the other allowance. Remove the other allowance. The other allowance. So those of you that are removing this allowance, that allowance, that allowance from your business. By the time you know it, a very chanya and yanine, Pazalo Pocolisi, Piachineke. Oh, now, Mugam, because you can only deceive yourself, you can't deceive God. Praise the Lord. Overcome the sinful nature of greed. Overcome that sinful nature of greed, covetousness, that sinful nature to grab Every, everybody that is born into this world. Is born with a nature that wants to take, 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 take. He doesn't want to give. The fact that you are practicing it doesn't mean that you learnt it. It's in your nature. That is what is what is called the old nature, the sinful nature. If you are born into this world and you don't have that nature, it means you are a spirit. You are not a human being. Every human being was born with a sinful nature. And that nature is a selfish nature that always wants to grab, 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 grab. And so, the proof of your Christianity is your ability to give. Give obedience, give service, give money, give out. 
the old nature, sinful nature is me, the way I want it, for me, the other one. You are not, is not interested in God or other people. So the proof, the extent of your Christianity is the extent. If you are not a giver, you are not holy. If you are not a giver, you are not holy. You are covetous. You are living under the love of money. Holiness is be having the nature of God. And the nature of God is love. And love gives. For God so loved the world that he gave. Praise God. In the book of Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22, there was a curse on the earth. And after Noah offered unto the Lord, the curse was cancelled. I will no longer curse the earth. For man's thought, I know I'm full of evil from his youth. So I won't curse him again. By the offering of one man, so I'm not about, you know, I preach this. It's not because we want to raise money. I'm not about to raise money. I'm telling you, what is helping me, helping the church, helping everybody that is succeeding genuinely that you know. Praise God. Please, stop pretending that you don't know why you are suffering. Stop pretending that you don't know why you are suffering. Stop pretending. You you are suffering. Stop pretending. Whether in this church or outside, I see a lot of pretenders. People who never pay tight and they want the pastor to continue praying for them so that something can change. I don't know how you can get a pastor to, to, to reverse a course that God himself said he should stay there. That pastor will kill himself and I can't be that pastor. Praise God. If God said that somebody is cursed when he does this is blessed when he does this and you now choose the cause and you're asking the pastor to bless you on top of that cause you'll be wasting your time it's not about bringing money to church please that is not about you making the, the this church was built the money tight money that went into this church tight and offering is less than one third less than one fourth of of the money spent here God was sending money from everywhere. Before you started paying tax, as the church not been going forward. It's because of your own good. Stop pretending that you don't know why you are suffering. Stop pretending that you don't know why things are not working. Check your tithe. Have you been faithful with your tithe? People can waste their time praying long prayers that make no sense. People coming from different countries of the world. Sometimes I don't pick their cause. Because only few are sincere with themselves. Some people come from uh, one country, the uh, US, from uh, London, Australia, different countries, Germany. I say, that country where you are, do you pay tithe in the church where you worship? Don't bring tithe to me. Don't bring that. Please, we are not beggars. This church is well to do. I'm not asking you to bring the tithe here. That country where you are worshiping, are you paying tithe there? And uh, Pastor, I won't lie to you sometimes. I think so. That's your problem. Correct it first. Until you obey God, you don't need prayer. It's after you have obeyed God and the devil is now resisting you, that is when you need prayer. You don't need prayer when you are disobeying God. The only prayer that should be made for you is for you to be able to go back and obey God. So please, if you have financial challenge in this church and you are not a tight payer, don't come to annoy me because I'm going to ask you. And if you lie, your sins will be multiplied. If you are not a tight payer, stop coming to, to waste my time. And if you are sending somebody for counseling, ask them whether they pay tight in the church where they worship. If they don't pay tight there, let them stop bothering me about financial matters or anything like that. Praise God. Don't bring the person. Because I'm going to ask the person who sent him or her. You'll be wasting my time. It's just like connecting this thing now. And there is no electricity. Pastor, pray! So that this fan will begin to turn. You won't kill me. I'll fulfill my assignment. Are you hearing me? You know what to do. 
The day you want to prosper, you know what to do. The day you really, really want to prosper, you know what to do. Praise God. And then pursue excellence. We'll be dealing more with that in the second service. Pursue excellence. Pursue excellence. After you have tightened and you are a giver and you are living holy and then you are, ex you are, you are, you are knowledgeable in your business. Why do you need to be knowledgeable? Because unbelievers who don't know God some of them are still succeeding in that business are you hearing me because business is about principles business is about principles so when you learn the principles on the getting your business you read you go to those who are doing better than you who are Christians you learn then you will be able to offer quality competitive service and then when the blessing is on top of that, that excellence, my, nobody will see your back. You'll be right there at the top. May that become your testimony. I say, may that become your testimony. This is 21 days prayer. We are finished praying. Today is seven days. And there are still 14 days. Please don't waste time. Don't waste those remaining days. Anything you need to do to make your life, to, to, to attract the blessing of God, please do it. Stop struggling. People are just wishing that somehow they can disobey God and things will still work out. They can disobey God and things will still be in order. Um, like just a little disobedience here and there. And, and they, they, have, they planned it and, that, that, and they want to use prayer. To, to enforce success on top of deliberate disobedience. Let's not tempt God. Let's not tempt God. Praise God. Can we stand to our feet? Thank you for adding another year onto my case. Yes. Hallelujah. And that of my How old are you? They will not tell us. They will not tell us. Thirdly, yes. I want to thank God for his healing upon my first son. Last two weeks, Wednesday, he just started feeling somehow, breathing as if he wants to give up. I've never experienced that kind of thing in my life. So we came for midweek service, and after that, daddy personally prayed for him. He began to receive strength. We went to hospital and they said it was good. But I give God all glory because he's sound and healthy today. That devil has checked back to hell. And every sickness that came with you has gone back to hell in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, in the year 2015, through the grace of this commission, I got my miracle job in Anambra State Judiciary. So our confirmation letter was supposed to be given us given to us after three years, but it was withheld all these years. But to the glory of God, it has been released now. And I give God all the Hey! Shout hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Emweke Edith I just want to thank God for the financial favor I got on Thursday. You know, we've been praying against the past. Financial, financial favor shall be shall your lot and your portion from now in Jesus' name. Praying against the powers, you know, holding and you know, hijacking our money. And then when this money was supposed to come, you know, the person, you know, said he will give me ten thousand. I said, okay, thank God. You no, know, but that is not what we've been praying. We've been praying for big money. So at the time, the ten thousand did not even come again. I was like, let me for. I said, no, it is our power. The power that is holding the small one will still hold the big one for mm -hmm. money. That will fight. You know, against that power, let it release a small one. Yes. And then we kept praying, and as we were praying, I was like, that money should come. That small one that I've already heard, you know, that it will fall, enter my hand, let it enter my hand. That's right. And I give God the glory that when He came, it, it was doubled. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ.